good afternoon and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first of the We Hate video podcasts. I am currently here with a uh, Mr. Tom and a Mr. Connor. Hello. We're going to be discussing a wide variety of topics tonight, uh, mostly ranging from the Five Guys Burgers and Lies controversy <laughs> yeah. uh, created by Miss Zoe Quinn. Um, the internet and certain internet celebrities uh, opinions on the matter such as the internet aristocrat uh, Greg Tito, Jean Sterling and Total Total Biscuit potentially John Tron as well as Alex Dean um, and pretty much we're going to be discussing the journalistic integrity of the video games industry um, in terms of conflicts of interest and journalist shit so uh, yeah I think we should start Tom, would you care to uh, clue us in briefly on the Five Guys, Burgers and Lies controversy? Okay, so uh, Zoe Quinn's legacy goes back to about December of last year when she released uh, Depression Quest, the non-game about being sad, I guess. It was rated uh, hotly. In Game of the Year awards, along with Gone Home, yeah, well, for stuff. Best non-video game in a video game category, <laughs> <laughs> which makes total sense, by the way. <laughs> total Absolute sense. sense. Yeah, so uh, she gained a lot of controversy due to harassment allegations towards a site named Wizard Chan, which is basically full of thirty-year-old virgins that are like super depressed and lonely and socially inept and but they now know alchemy. She accused them of uh, harassing her and just generally being total assholes towards her but they just they just seem like the sort of people that keep to themselves you know? Yeah. <laughs> they've, got their, they've got their own uh, board dedicated to people like them why would they hate on a game that is supposedly like bringing good publicity to their Con- well, what is most of their condition anyway? You know, depression. If it was an if it wasn't an absolutely like wank game, <laughs> <laughs> just just throwing that out there. First off, it's a shit game. <laughs> it, it's pretty poor as far as the game goes. Yeah, it's, yeah. you you could make it in PowerPoint. Personally, I could never effective. find the game mechanics. Wait, uh, <laughs> mechanics now? Sorry, what? Yeah, I, I I could never find the game mechanics. Honestly, there was no start button. I mean, I tried to pause the game, nothing happened, and there were no enemies throughout. <laughs> you know? Well, you didn't Wait, kill a single person the whole way. Yeah, what did, what did, what did, what did you shoot? Myself. Yeah, so that gained a, a whole bunch of attention for the game. Which would have basically gone completely unknown if uh, if it hadn't happened, and uh, and recently her ex boyfriend released a basically a an essay on uh, on basically why she was a terrible terrible person and uh, and how she cheated on him with five at least different gentlemen, including, but not limited to, uh, Nathan Grayson, one of the journalists at Kotaku. And I think he wrote for Rock, Paper, Shotgun also. And, uh, also her boss as well. Oh yeah, and her boss, her married boss. Which has fantastic implications in terms of conflicts of interest on top of, uh, Nathan Grayson. I think there was also a third gentleman who, uh, who I think he's uh, part of sound generation and kind of uh, sound scores, musical scores, um, in very independent video games, which also uh, kind of raises eyebrows as well. <clears throat> yeah. A massive shout out, however, to the internet aristocrat for his explanation as well. If you guys haven't heard about it. Um, Obviously, you're bound to have heard a lot about this subject, otherwise you wouldn't be on this podcast at this moment in time. But uh, <laughs> if you fancy a recap, then the Internet Aristocrat definitely has a uh, very concise and very detailed um, vision of events. 
yeah, we'll, we'll put a link to that in the in the description of this. Definitely. Uh, but yeah, the the whole scenario has pretty much blown completely and utterly out of proportion because of a number of factors. This is. I do believe this is the second time Zoe Quinn has attempted to censor a group of people from uh, something that has happened or something that has been done. The yeah. first being Wizard Chan, when she completely and utterly uh, set pretty much everybody against them. And, uh, and of course, the second bout of censorship, which is with, happening... With no, with no evidence. No, no evidence at oh, all. God. Besides a post that said that she was a cunt. This bout of evidence right now, which uh, which is happening this very second, so pretty much spread the word if you know if you believe what you say. If not, then that's entirely your opinion. Yeah. But so, uh, what I what I think though is the most bizarre thing about the situation is just how nobody seems to want to cover it. No. In the journalism sort of aspect, there's there's very few articles that aren't a uh, woman is harassed by misogynists for personal affairs that have nothing to do with the games industry, which is a complete and utter fucking lie. Men's rights activists <laughs> shout a cloud. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They, they they say that there's no issue, but there's so many people that are sort of up in arms, and it I, I think. It's mostly but to do with how she she's been trying to suppress information. Exactly. Well, they would. It, people wouldn't be as mad as they are if she just let things ride. Yeah. Exactly. Like standard sort of Streisand effect business, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, things like this happen all the time. Like, uh, not exactly in the same vein, but a while back, um, if a guy uploaded a video to YouTube of his Samsung S4 catching fire. Uh, because yeah. uh, Samsung demanded that the uh, they upload a video as proof because they didn't like believe him and wouldn't give him a refund or whatever. Uh, he uploaded the, uploaded the video, and Samsung demanded that he sign like an, a flipping NDA to and uh, take the video down, never sort of never show anyone ever again, never tell anyone about it, and that on, only that way would he get like a refund. And of course, the guy didn't agree to that bullshit and just posted the video uh, live on YouTube, and it got like <laughs> hundreds of thousands of views. Fantastic. That's fantastic. And it's just, yeah, it's the same sort of principle, isn't it? Like, why why would you cover something up with, when it can be over in a, a couple of days as opposed to dragging it out and just causing this whole shitstorm across the internet? See, the thing that makes me think is, did he capture the video of the Samson S4 exploding and then catching fire with another Samson S4? <laughs> Which also exploded and caught fire. Yeah. <laughs> After uploading. Yeah. <laughs> No, he's, no. He's just got like true. this massive circle jerk of Samsung S4s just recording each other on fire. And then setting <laughs> themselves on fire. Yeah. So, like well, mission impossible. Like, <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, that's, that's all you've got to take away from this. That setting yourself on fire is a terrible idea. Yeah. Spontaneous. Which is effectively what Zoe Quinn has done, thing. if you think about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Except in a social sense. Well, I don't know. If she keeps pissing 4chan off, it'll be in a literal sense as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think the whole business uh, about everybody getting up in arms about it is a lot to do with obviously the fact that she's trying to sense things, yeah. but also that she's claiming it on the behalf of social justice that nobody must listen or nobody must know about her recent foray into sleeping with five gentlemen, three of whom being particularly big in both indie and regular video games, uh, journalism, and development. Yeah. Right, let's let's be honest. Strikes... No, no, no one like sleeping with five dudes while while you're actually got a boyfriend or whatever. It's, it's pretty. It's a pretty shitty thing to do. But let's be honest. No one actually cares. No, no one gives no. a shit. <laughs> Why would the internet care who, how many, like, how many guys you've slept with? No one cares. But when you st like, try and stop people from talking about it, that's where the problems come from. That's exactly. what pisses people off. And that's uh, something that a lot of people have failed to sort of to, to say when uh, debating about this on, on the internet is that uh, you um, know, we don't care <laughs> about you, that. You couldn't, you couldn't talk about it on uh, on V. You couldn't talk about it on Reddit. They were. I'm pretty sure they've been uh, 
deleting Imja pictures now? Yeah, they need uh, a they dedicated have... subreddit just for discussing it, so that it, so that uh, subreddit mods couldn't um, couldn't take it down, and then Reddit yep. itself took it down. Reddit yeah, itself yeah, took it down. Yeah. Um, and of course, the comment graveyard on <laughs> Reddit that was pretty intense. I couldn't and believe also, that. And uh, also, the escapist fantastic nuke from orbit tactic. Just ban uh, everyone. Ban, 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 ban. Exactly. Just ban Just everybody. fucking scorched earth policy. Everything must burn. <laughs> yeah, just somebody mentioned something that we don't like quickly. Exactly. Everyone within like a, fucking... like a three thread radius has to be completely banned. And it's like Greg Russia in Tito's... fucking World War Two. Greg Tito's <laughs> smug attitude. Like, oh, exactly. I'm, I'm just doing it to be nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're sure, we're sure, Tito. That's exactly oh, what yeah, we're doing. Oh, yeah, Greg, Greg Tito certainly knows what's up in this respect. Greg Tito, humanitarian. Like, he's truly a noble <laughs> individual. He's, he's, got a, he's really looking out for the entire uh, consumer, or every consumer in the gaming industry. Oh, definitely. I mean, I mean, in summary, all this boils down to is nobody gives a fuck if she sleeps with five guys. What people genuinely give a fuck about is that she's censoring up the fact that she slept with three people in the video games industry. And then they went on to uh, give good reviews. Like, Yeah. Reviews it's like, anyway. I don't care if she randomly slept with other guys. What I care about is that she's sleeping with her boss. Yeah. It- and, uh... Greg Tito's fantastic quotation on it um, when he was challenged and somebody said that this was nepotism <laughs> and he replied that nepotism only occurs within families and as such I don't think she slept with a member of her family which makes you think does Greg Tito know the definition of the word nepotism I don't think he does the practice among those with power and or influence of favoring relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. Exactly. That is the uh, literal definition. It's, it's got nothing to do with family. It could be, like it, it might be, but then it could also be anybody else. Oh yeah, it was definitely so, something to do with families back in medieval fucking England, but... <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> this isn't royalty we're talking about. It's people taking royalties. Old Tito stuck in the 1700s. Oh yeah. Uh, well, he's a white fucking knight. He'd go well in medieval England. Yeah, you, you guys. What you do have to remember though is that uh, we're just we're just white cis scum. We can't actually have an opinion on anything. No, no. I forgot. Everybody take take all this with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're, we're not a minority, therefore. Yeah. We can't Disregard everything. We yeah. We, you know what? You know what? Fuck it. Let's just. Opinion. I'll stop recording now. This is just. We, we, it's, it's invalid. If I, Fruitless endeavor. I, I think Tom's allowed a slight opinion. <laughs> like a, a bit tiny bit of an opinion. I get a quarter of an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> it's, more, it's more like a fifth. <laughs> yeah, because I am still a dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you, were a, if you were a trans, then you'd get about two thirds. Uh, yeah. And you're unsure of your sexuality as well, and you know, you're, you're, you're up there then. You, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, Is, people will listen. Another thing that I've noticed, though, is the sheer hypocrisy of, uh, is it Steve Toledo, uh, the editor-in-chief of Kotaku? Oh, fucking I think Kotaku. So. Jesus Christ. I, right, I, I, <laughs> you know, the more I hear it, the more and more and more they sound like Tekken characters to me. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay to watch them fight each other. To the death. <laughs> Greg Tito versus Stan Torito. This is Greg Dorito Pope. But he he said that he put up an official statement saying that he believes Nathan Grayson's story and that he's he's going to take no further action and that they don't publicize. Sort of gossip and uh, and rumors, but besides that, uh, earlier in the year they posted an article regarding uh, rape allegations towards the uh, Cards Against Humanity co-creator. Yeah, so um, they're more than happy to ruin somebody's life so long as they don't work at Kotaku. Yeah, or have slept with someone from Kotaku, or yeah. interfere with their. Uh, Interests. Yeah. 
personally, I can't wait for Kotaku's 50th uh, article on why getting killed in a video game is rape. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've all heard about that one before. Patricia yeah. Hernandez. Here we are. On the 7th of the 15th, 2004. Oh, set, yeah, so... The 15th wait, is Patricia got... Hernandez the one who got... Um, who was supposed to be the receiver of this? Or the oh, she's the one. She's the one. It. She's the one that uh, wrote the article. Oh, everybody loves uh, Miss Hernandez. Yeah, the fifteenth seventh, uh, two thousand fourteen. She wrote an article about Max Temkin, saying uh, about uh, he wrote a blog about the rape accusation, and uh, I have no idea if. Uh, if he was found guilty or not, I couldn't care less, really. But uh, the fact is, you know, they're posting this and then going on and saying, no, we don't post stuff like that. <laughs> it's just, you know... No, it's because, I, it's because he's not a part of the Kotaku Empire. Yeah. And as such, uh, the Dark Lord Editor-in-Chief has no interest... Uh, Max Temkin yeah. wasn't sleeping with uh, with the journalists there, so. Yeah, so does that. That being said, who would want to with Patricia Hernandez? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Um. No, it's uh, it's a sorry state of affairs at the moment. I use the word affairs rather hilariously in that respect. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need some ointment for that burn. <laughs> Um, Open up your system, no. viewer. Personally, I think uh, I think Zoe Quinn's trying to use the whole uh, ideology of um, of social justice in order to use her as a form of scapegoat, in which she can go, "No, these guys are bullying me because they're all a bunch of men's rights activists," which personally I find completely wrong because it's taking social justice. And using there as a weapon or as a shield for yourself. It's taking something that should genuinely be used for right and correct methods. Of course, you know, a, there is a problem with uh, female representation in video games. I, I would say so. I think. Yeah. In many, yeah. I, I imagine it is intimidating as fuck to try and, you know. Enter such a yeah. male-dominated space. It takes yeah, a special kind of special kind of woman to go into a um something like like if you can compare it to like the first woman to vote or whatever, but on a obviously a slightly less important scale. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. And and in a community as clicky as uh, video games, you know, it's, get it's hard in. for anybody to break into. Um, yeah, breaking in. They're, this... not, they're not from originally. You know, it's sort of exactly. you grow up in. Your your individual like group, and then you sort of stay there. Yeah, I mean, there's a massive problem with uh, female representation in video games, both in the development side and in how they're represented in video games. Um, when you have somebody like Zoe Quinn tarnishing the repetition reputation of social justice by using it as a shield or as a tool in order to continue, or um, or you know succeed and enhance her her video game kind of uh, reputation. Yeah. Personally, I just think that's incredibly wrong. Yep, and but, but she then... really... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, she, she really shouldn't call herself a social justice warrior or advocate because she's using it for entirely selfish means. I think, though, that there's a lot of that going around in the whole um, SJW sort of part of the internet. No one, no one is an actual social justice warrior on the internet. They've all got their own little... It, reason it, it, for saying the shit they do. It's an echo chamber. That they're all just sitting around listening to how they're all a victim of something of of misogyny or of of ableism or any of that spiel. <laughs> they'll they'll take anything and they'll say, "Oh yeah, that that makes me upset. You shouldn't do that," or something of that ilk. 
It's sort of like uh, they just uh, they go go on the internet one day feeling a bit shit, and then uh, some other guy say, "Oh yeah, you you have a right to not feel this way. You have a right to not be treated like this." And then they think, "Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I like being told I have a right to things. I like being told that it's my right to live, uh, regardless of how other people feel about it. It's my right to have all this thing, all these things done for me." And myself to feel this way regardless of what other people think and then it just, they just sort of stick around then and then they eventually they start shouting back and it all just sort of it's just it turns into one giant circle jerk of oh yeah you you totally you totally have the right to this and you have the right to that and i have the right to this and you have the right you know so it's just and uh, it gets just, to the point it's where a self-perpetuating problem yeah it gets to the point where everybody thinks that they have a right to everything everyone thinks when they're special fact, when... you have to work for no, it nobody's special no one, no one yeah, special is born snowflake with... syndrome. <laughs> yeah, no, no one's born with the right to not be offended. Exactly. Just a dude. Yeah, or a dudette. And here we have a situation <laughs> where Zoe Quinn... I think Zoe Quinn may genuinely have this ideology that she is a paragon of social justice. <laughs> that yeah. she herself is the sole cause and reason for breaking into video games and changing everything from the inside. Oh, man. When, yeah. when in actual fact, all she's doing is using the views in the term social justice for her own selfish means. The, the fact that she, th that she posted and, and that she thought that she could go into the industry from the inside and tear it down from, from the top, I mean, the fact she even thought that she could do that with one stupid fucking video game is just a perfect example of why she's the same as the rest of the movie. She thinks she's so special. But she's done it. But what has she exactly <laughs> achieved, though? What has she achieved? She's definitely sort of caused a sort of rift. In well, she the pissed a bunch of people off. But you can piss oh, a bunch she's... of people off really easily. She's not actually done any lasting damage. Really. I mean, everyone's known that uh, video game journalism has been corrupt for ages. It's just this has drawn more attention to it. And she's not torn anything down. Oh no! Just, I think we should. Like, the internet's up in arms, just like it is every other day. I think, I think we should thank get... Zoe Quinn for for helping highlight the corruption in video game journalism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for, yeah. I think I think <laughs> the... something's gonna get torn down, but uh, I, don't I don't know. If... I, I um, I'm of the opinion that uh, this will all just go away and everyone will just forget and move on to the next next uh, issue. It shouldn't. Oh yeah, like some, well, some some someone's head should roll for this. Not literally, so don't shout at me. But, well, uh, we'll still have the fucking VGX awards. Jeff Keeley will still be the fucking Doritos Pope. He'll be advertising Halo fucking seventy two with Mountain Dew Doritos, fucking enhanced guava bean flavor. <laughs> and the same shit will still happen every day, and the world will keep turning on this shitty fucking axis. Who, who was the other guy that hosted? Was it Joel McHale? Yeah, Joel McHale, the champion that video games needs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't even know that much about video games, I'm he pretty sure. He does cool. not. <laughs> he also got Lara Croft's voice actor's panties a little bit wet. Nice! Yeah. yeah. And also managed to turn Jeff Keighley into a blubbering ball of spaghetti. Oh yeah. There was there was spaghetti on the ceiling fan. <laughs> <laughs> it, was it was just flinging everywhere. Spaghetti in the top deck of the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so when you flush spaghetti pours out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going a little bit off topic here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm confused. How the fuck did we although, get this? Although we could, although we could probably, you know, we could probably rein it back by uh, by actually continuing on with Jeff Keighley and uh, highlighting the kind of corruption in the video games industry. Jeff Keighley is, I don't know. I don't think he's even a a person anymore. He's, he is literally just a walking bag of money depositories. He's yeah. He's any any semblance of a human has sort of been like sucked out forcefully through his through his eye holes and like replaced with Pure Doritos money. and <laughs> Mountain Dew. And he had a he had a Dew plant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's not uh, he's nothing but Doritos and Mountain Dew anymore. Yeah, he is a, He has like a clasp inside happen. of his head. You can open it up and there's like a little uh, a funnel that just you, 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 just, you just throw in anything and then you'll piss out Mountain Dew. He's <laughs> like a one-man well. 
<laughs> you walk up to him, put a nickel in him, and pray to fuck you don't turn into him. <laughs> yeah, Mountain Duitus is highly contagious. It yeah, is. Mountain Dew would really burn, I think. Oh man, yeah, without a doubt. It's full of acid, isn't it? It's like rot your teeth in seconds. <laughs> but it'll highly energize your pocket, come PD. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Recharge your bank account, become a corporate whore today. <laughs> it's it's a shame, like, how I, I consider, I, I know many people don't consider games an art form, but I, I think they are... Or they can be. No, well, I'll take a look at Journey. I think, I think um, that saying games are an art form or games aren't an art form is the same as saying uh, my doodle is an art form. Like, yeah. it could be. You don't know, but may- maybe I've just, like, maybe it's not, maybe I haven't even doodled a picture. You know? It could, yeah. like, you can't sort of, <laughs> that made no fucking sense at all. But you can't, you can't um, generalize like that. Some games are going to be art, some games aren't, and it's up to whoever plays the game to determine whether, what it means to them, you know? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, but, personally, I would I would say Journey is an art form. The video but, game is a work of art. I, that, that's I, an I, ideal... personally, that's... I personally consider a lot of video games to be art, and it, it, it just bothers me that like they're being twisted and corrupted and like used for... Like monetary uh, gain. It's funny you say journey though, because I, you you hear a lot of people say journey was like Jesus's gift to the PlayStation. But I <laughs> I, I I played it. I, pl- I played it. I put a good uh, good like hour into it, uh, an hour or two, and I just didn't feel it. Like you might say I didn't play it for long enough, but if I don't get like the feeling for for the game after a couple of hours of play, then I don't feel like. You didn't. You didn't grab me. You know. I didn't hear. Didn't feel any of this uh, shit. People. Oh no. Regardless of what filthish video game developers say, you are entitled to your own opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like personally, I love it, and I genuinely yeah, do think that it's a work of fucking art. But that, that just sort of proves my point that you, you think it's a work of art, and, and I don't. You know, like, that's exactly. how it should be. Like we're we, all we can, critics. Yeah, we can just sit here now and not throw abuse until you but, uh, threaten my favorite video game. At which point, you know. You know, worst thing since Hitler. Uh, I don't think so much a dwarf fortress. Oh, you, you <laughs> you're pretty much gonna Fuck die you, in, this, just, in this conversation. Just, just die. Go, go, jump, jump I think it's. I think it's worth fortress. highlighting that uh, that I'm fairly certain it's the producer or the developer of Journey was a female. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She was. I think. Yeah. I think that goes to show you that. Uh, the correct way to integrate into video games and video game kind of development and culture. You know, in that respect, she's done very, very well for herself in that her video game wasn't sold by the fact that she was a female in the video games industry. No. It was sold because it was a bloody good game. Yeah, people yeah, liked every, it. Everyone, so. everyone knows Journey, but I, I bet you, you ask like 90% of these people, they'll, they'll, all, they'll all say, uh, sorry, a woman made Journey. Oh, cool. Or something that I don't exactly. you know, no, Nobody no, cares. Yeah, no one, no one knows. Like, like it's 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 the old uh, whoever shouts the loudest is the one that gets heard, and the majority of people don't bother shouting because they're quite happy the way things are. You know, they, they, no exactly. one exactly. They're happy playing video games and yeah. making them. Yeah, like no one cares what gender the people making the games are, as long as they're good. So I think I think this is also uh, no one that matters anyway. It also highlights the correct way to integrate and the correct way to kind of make change. As it's been shown throughout the years, radicalized change doesn't work. Usually it's gradual. Women's rights in the past, very gradual. It was done in a gradual way and eventually we've come to the point where women are viewed legally as equal in terms of uh, of the law as men. And... You know, it's a gradual process. The, the extremist kind of way of uh, everything must be done right now and all change must be instantaneous yeah, has they, never worked. They just go around and just like spew hatred upon the straight white male. It's, it's like they think if we vomit enough venom onto this straight white male, he'll become whatever fucking he'll minority of the day is. his mind and see the light. <laughs> and, and, you know... But, but that's the thing, like, you could... You can say to to one of these people, yes, I agree with you, I am inferior, I am not as good as you, and they still won't be happy. And there's no way to please these people. You just cannot. No. 
Not at all. Nothing. Uh, nothing is ever good enough. Like, it's the like, same with the video game industry yeah, as like, well. Like, um, like, oh, um, Will Wheaton. Like, remember, I, do you remember that, Tom? He apologised. And he apologised to a social justice warrior for referencing spirit animals. And, <laughs> which, which is just, it's just absurd, like, to begin with. Oh, social appropriation. You, like, you said, mentioned spirit animals. Therefore, you are stealing culture from from um, Native Americans. And, <laughs> and he, rather than just telling them to go fuck themselves, which is the clear, like, actual decent answer to people, to people like that, he apologised, and that just made it ten times worse. Like, apologising to people like this just makes them feel like they... It, it, it gives them more validation for their own yeah. points. To go and continue a... Yeah. I mean, Maybe personally, we'll Tom's spirit animal's a wombat, and mine's like a fucking capoeira or something. <laughs> Capobara or fucking... Your Chris spirit a is, is the a Brazilian one. Brazilian fighting dance. Yeah, exactly. It's Christy, Tiger, and Eddie from Tekken. <laughs> all combined into one. And amazingly enough, it's also my fursona. It's the one from Street Fighter 4, uh, El Fuego. <laughs> See, I like to think mine's Hakan, or who's the guy with the oil? From Street oh. Fighter 4. I, the fat guy who lubes up. Oh. Uh, um. Rufus? Yeah, he's my true <laughs> spirit animal. <laughs> Turkish fucking oh. oil fighter. He's great. He's fantastic. Um, but yeah, heading, heading back on point, I mean, I th I'm fairly certain that we've covered a little bit of the corruption uh, side. Uh, further mentions, obviously, we talked about Jeff Keighley. Brief summary on Keighley, he essentially sold out to Microsoft Mountain Dew and Doritos and uh, starred in a very promotional uh, video advertisement in which he was sat next to Master Chief. <laughs> and a wide variety of Baja Blast uh, Mountain Dew and Cool Ranch Doritos in order to promote uh, a kind of collaboration between Mountain Dew Doritos and Bungie and Microsoft. And there was just no life in his eyes. No, he looked like I, genuinely he died I, on that I day. Ac I actually thought you were joking. <laughs> I was I was chuckling with no. something and ha this is a funny bit. This is oh 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 you, you're serious. <laughs> yeah, oh, this shit. is an actual thing. You can Google it. You can Google the Doritos Pope and he will be there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm actually gonna do this one minute. <laughs> yeah, it it is a thing. Oh God, you're right. <laughs> what? <laughs> what even? This uh. He looks so dead. He, yeah. he does. You can see all life is is lost from his eyes. You, yeah, you stare into his eyes, and and there's no iris. You just see the X from the Xbox logo. <laughs> just a red ring of death in his eyes. <laughs> oh man, I have I have never seen a man look quite so dead inside in any he picture. Just, so sad, isn't it? He just like he, you can practically see. All integrity he ever had just leak out of his ears, along with uh, any hope he had of ever like being taken seriously again. Uh, his his journalistic integrity is taking a tumble in the p recent months. I mean, um, on the VGX awards. Yeah, it was great on the VGX awards. Joe McHale repeatedly asked him uh, what his favorite video game was, his most anticipated, and all Jeff Keighley would ever talk about was Titanfall, and how fantastic Titanfall was going to be. Oh, but he kept saying that he w couldn't say. Like, I don't think he ever picked one. He would, like, he would ask, like, Greg Joel McHale would ask what his most anticipated game was, and he would say, oh, well, I'm looking forward to lots of great games. Uh, but, but I'm really <laughs> looking forward to Titanfall. And then he, he would, he would ra rail off all the, all the different ones. You know, he's got the Titanfall and the, and the card and, the, and all that nonsense. IS Call of Duty Advanced Modern Warfare 74. Ultimate Modern the whole fuck stupid. <laughs> oh look, we have a puppy edition. That was absurd. <laughs> Call of Doggies. <laughs> and with Zviati, now with live uh, and now with dynamic duck chasing gameplay. <laughs> Including uh, Corgi DLC. <laughs> <laughs> Featuring I would the queen. play a Call of Duty game in which you played as corgis. <laughs> a pug downloadable yeah. content pack. Shit, shit, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to play as a pug murdering people, that like would you be just, incredible. You just like lap dogs, 
with like rifles strapped to your back <laughs> and you just run around <laughs> sort of trying to gun down I don't you know. Could, I think that would probably draw a lot of ire from uh, Peter. And uh, you could. Oh no, Peter would love it. He'd be like, "Oh, uh, downtrodden dog stands up to human overlord." <laughs> Cis transphobic. Fucking white males. Male. <laughs> yeah, white human See, male. you can tell. You can tell in the Call of Duty development title they probably had like nicknames for them, like Assassination Alsatian or Murderous Malamute. <laughs> or some shit like that. Carnivorous Corgi. Oh. Dangerous Dashund. <laughs> Serious Dead Sausage Dog. Dalmatian. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Jeff Keighley was, uh, was nice and in on the money bags. Um, another one is IGN, who sold out their journalistic integrity for shit tons of money in the form of paid reviews. And also are owned by uh, Rupert Murdoch. Oh, of course. You know, he's a perfect role model. Yeah, the the beacon of light and truth himself, Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> never lied to <laughs> anyone. Never did <laughs> any backhand deals, without nothing. His, who would we be without his uh, his newspapers? Probably <laughs> Quantum Leap to the year 4073. Sorry. Yeah. What, what's, what's the newspaper? Sorry. Oh, uh, uh, Rupert Murdoch is—he's the guy that owns. No, no I've like, never heard of a newspaper. I'm afraid. Rupert Murdoch is—is <laughs> is the news. Yeah. He—he he is just the news. Yeah, you own, you own like the Sun and the Daily Mail and all that bollocks, I think, isn't he? Yeah, and Fox yeah. News. Oh uh, fuck yeah, perfect. And the NBC News is it NBC? I don't know. The NBC. He has more fingers in pies than American pie. He has more fingers in pies than Zoe Quinn's boyfriends. Oh! <laughs> Five pies, burgers and fries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, but yeah. It's, it's all just... just lacking journalistic integrity throughout, throughout the video games industry. Um... On top of IGN and Jeff Keighley, you also have the likes of Greg Tito and his censorship. Yeah, this it, entire incident. Somebody called out an article on The Escapist that uh, basically completely backed Zoe Quinn during the Wizard Chan uh, fiasco, where uh, all the, the only evidence that they had that this harassment was taking place was a screenshot that Zoe Quinn had taken of two posts on Wizard Chan, which she would n never have gone to in the first place. So somebody has sent these pictures to her in order to cause trouble. And LA one said that she was a cunt and the other one said that women can't get depressed or some nonsense, you know, something ridiculous that nobody should have taken seriously in the first place. Um, Pretty much just shit posting. Yeah, exactly. Things like and, uh, that happen every fucking day, though. This isn't a new thing, is it? I mean, even if no. it was utterly serious, you're always going to get people like that on the internet. It's just, it shouldn't be, but it is just a fact of, of the internet. Like, that's just yeah. what happens. It comes with the anonymity. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and so, The Escapist posted a uh, an article covering this harassment, and it uh, it got a lot of views and a lot of hits and a lot of comments basically saying how uh, how the people from Wizard Chan were subhuman and they were uh, pathetic evil. virgins and how yeah well, they were the only way to, to fight back against like a harassment is to harass people back it's the yeah. only way it works it's the only cure you know fight but, fire uh, and fire but then uh, a few days ago, Greg Tito posted on the forums basically explaining how he understands that the article was posted without any sort of evidence to back up Zoe Quinn's claims, but but he was perfectly okay with that, and he didn't see anything wrong with uh, what he described as sort of standing up for, for somebody who's being harassed, and... Uh, it just, he then goes on to exp, uh, explain how people shouldn't be painting like sort of a, a false narrative, but whilst painting the 
repeating a false narrative. Exactly. It's... It's backwards. It doesn't make any sense, does it? No. It's thinking one thing and saying another. But uh, in, in the respect of Greg Tito and uh, the whole escapist thing, he tried to defend Zoe Quinn and is continuously defending Zoe Quinn by saying that the escapist will always uh, side on side with the people who are suffering from abuse. And you have a situation where a group of largely innocent people, be it two people who made two crappy posts... Who could very well be the same person. Who could have very well been the same person <laughs> from the incredibly low volume of posts that did happen. Yeah. Are now subject of massive abuse. And in the respect and in terms of Wizard Chan, are literally a group of depressed... Like, there's, there's literally a, a, a link to the suicide hotline at the top of one of their... Yeah, yeah genuinely it's such a problem. depressed 30-year-old virgins. You could probably go on there now and find at least one thread asking, like, the least painful way to kill yourself. Helium, probably. You reckon? I think so. Uh, apparently I think a lot that. of people have said about it. Yeah, oh. um, I read about that and thought, apparently... <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's the the least painless, but if you get interrupted like halfway through, you could end up with permanent brain damage. So you gotta be sure. In a really high known. pitched voice. Helium. There's there's a uh, a severe lack of helium. There is indeed. So stock up, um, guys. Just in case you ever want to kill yourself. Yeah, going back on to uh, going back on topic. It's uh, yeah, it's it's incredibly ironic and pretty hilarious that Greg Tito is defending Zoe Quinn by saying that they will always defend the person who's receiving abuse, yet he was the direct cause of abuse to a group <laughs> of depressed 30-year-old men yeah. who are potentially and probably suicidal. It's... It's just awful. It's a very sorry state of affairs. It just goes back to this whole thing about uh, whether or not the integrity of... Uh, the video games journalism industry is actually intact. And to be perfectly honest, I'd say it definitely is not. Mm. I mean, journalis journalists usually have to maintain a code of integrity and a code of, not necessarily a code of honor, but pretty much a guideline set of rules in that they must always uh, try to find the most valuable and the most credible sources before they report on the subject and that they must at any time uh, have the humanity to kind of, you know, report her in a humane way. Yeah. And the way the escapist has handled things recently with the whole Zoe Quinn drama, A, they haven't looked for credible sources. They went to one unreliable source who is now incredibly in dis disrepute. And two, they didn't handle her in a hum humane way because they literally lambasted an entire group of depressed people solely for the reason of generating hits. Yeah. Their their integrity is completely and utterly in tatters, and the fact that Greg Tito won't apologize for any of this just goes to show how immoral the people at The Escapist really are. I mean, I'm not sure where I'm going to get my gaming news from anymore simply because I'm not sure that I can trust anything that any sort of major games publication can... Uh... The only one that I would say you could probably trust as far as uh, consumer rights are concerned is probably Total Biscuit. And he's an, he can be an opinionated, opinionated asshole, but he's always had con like the consumer at the heart of what he does, you know? Yeah. He seems to know what he's talking about. He tends to fight that. for the... Uh, fight for the everyday video gamer. Yeah. Which is uh, a very, very rare thing. Especially considering the amount of money the guy has been offered to do false exactly. offers and yet uh, false uh, adverts and yet he's never actually taken them, to the best of my knowledge, obviously. Yeah. Well, it just goes back to this thing of journalistic integrity. You know, Total, Total Biscuit genuinely does have his integrity sort of intact. Yeah. <coughs> Doing a terrible job. 
not if you ask social justice warriors, though. <laughs> that <laughs> statement he made that that caused some vitriol. Um, what? I think you next... mean that uh, lying and censorship and fake DMCA notices are wrong? How fucking dare you, you dirty <laughs> misogynistic pig? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. I think he got called a Nazi, too. <laughs> of course he did. Just, of course. That's well, you know, when you now, have your own opinion on the internet, of course you're a Nazi. You've got to be. <laughs> you couldn't possibly not want to like, commit genocide. Um, Tom, do you want to take over for Jim Sterling? Oh, here we go. Here, go. Have fun. Jim <laughs> Sterling. Um, I don't know. I think where Jim Sterling went wrong in this whole thing is that he didn't say what he thought for a long time and and he's built himself up to be this sort of personality this this person who who calls out you know uh big businesses on their really shitty practices and you know he's he fights for the the little man and the everyday yeah, the everyman. He's always had like an open door. He'll always respond to his Twitter and his Ask FM and whatnot. He'll he'll respond to most questions and whatnot on that. And yeah, then, you can, he's 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 normally pretty open. And then this comes round and. And it just so happens to coincide with, uh, you know, the fact that he himself is a bit of a social justice warrior and a bit of a feminist, and so is his wife. Yeah. And then it just so happens that this time he's not so open. He's not so. Yeah, he's he's a little more reserved and. And he takes quite a long time to uh, to actually say sort of anything about the situation. And then uh, the, the, the sad thing is, then he misses the mark entirely. Yeah. He, he missed the mark entirely. It's not about it's not about who he sleeps with, who she's like. Well, it's about who she sleeps with, but it's not about uh, the fact she slept with a bunch of people, which is what he seemed to think it was. It's yeah. not even it's not even so much about the the the, the um, games journalism side of it. That's important, but it's not the most important thing. The censorship. Is easily the most. Uh, I I think so. Preventing yeah. discussion, and he didn't mention that at all. He didn't speak about the fact that all this censorship that was going on, which is going on. Like it's still going down. Videos are still being taken down, and uh, all sorts yeah. of that. And he didn't mention yeah, it well. at all. And I'm a massive surprised. fan of Jim Sterling, you know. Yeah, he 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 seemed really surprised that uh, that so many people wanted his opinion on the situation, and and that just blows my mind because he's. You know, if you, you you watch any of his uh, Jimquisition videos, and he's uh, pretty opinionated. Oh, extremely, extremely opinionated. He's, he's built a career on being opinionated and being like open to like in, interaction with fans. And then something huge comes along that like blows the internet wide open, and he doesn't have a lot to say about it. And yeah, and I mean, he's made a statement now, and it's if you can call it that. yeah. It's, just, it's a pretty it's a, wank statement. It's a little safe. Yeah. Like, especially for how long after uh, the situation, like, actually came out. But, you know, going on with the whole uh, with the whole censorship thing, I mean, Zoe Quinn's been using DMCA takedowns yeah, on she took multitudes. Down, uh, mundane mats. Uh, yeah. And he confirmed that in a... Uh, and I think it, it might have been a live stream, I'm not sure. It's uh, Just literally tearing down everything that has any mention of it. Yeah, he, he confirmed in the live stream anyway that uh, it was, in fact, her that, uh, that sent the DMCA takedown. But he didn't uh, dispute it because he didn't want her to have his name, which I think is reasonable. Oh, definitely. Yeah, if I was him, I'd just re-upload it. <laughs> I think that's what he did. It's depressing that she can you that she like even the even the, it's depressing that she can even use that to do this anyway. The yeah. YouTube system works like that, but that's like a whole other kettle of fish. Like. But yeah, we could talk for an hour on that, probably. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're reaching about fifty minutes right now. It's it's impressive. <laughs> Good. It's, it's uh, the fact she took it down, and for anyone that doesn't know, uh, Mundane Matt does uh, videos where he talks over still images, and she took it down on the basis of uh, lost revenue because he was uh, breaching her copyright. And the still image he, sp uh, he spoke over was of her game, but it was on Steam, like 
like it was on one of the Steam. It was a previews. promotional image. Yeah, it was released on like t for public viewing, and the game is free anyway. It, it doesn't make any sense. She clearly didn't do that because of any form of lost revenue or any sort of copyright breach. It's because she saw what he had to say and then thought, oh, shit. Can't have that getting out. Abort. Yeah. The MCA immediately. And, and it's so depressing that YouTube allows her to do that. But as I said, that's a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, we could talk forever in the day on there. Yeah. Oh. But uh, I think... I think definitely, uh, I mean, I mean, Turtle Biscuit definitely had a good view in that respect. Like, he was... He came out straight away and said, look, oh, yeah. this is what I think of the situation. I'm um, not sure of the facts, but, you know, again, this, this and this is this. He's someone that does try and shy away from the, the whole, like, the internet as, you know, as, a, as a whole. You know, all the venom, he tries to hide from it. And then one day he just sort of comes out with his bullshit sniper and just starts like nailing people in the head with it. And it's just <laughs> admirable, admirable, a real consumer advocate as always. Oh yeah. yeah he, he blew people away with a <laughs> fair play to him. Really on form. He, he genuinely didn't care what anybody had to say. He had his own opinion and he was more than happy to show it. I can only think of the, uh, the scene in full metal jacket with the, uh, the sniper and he's just like unloading into that soldier. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I have it written down that we, also, that we also should mention Mr. John Wobble himself. John Tron, yeah, he's been yeah. pretty stellar about the whole thing. Yeah, he's been pretty great. But, <laughs> that being said, I think I, I'd take his opinions with a pinch of salt, being as his, uh, you know, kind of feud with uh, Zoe Quinn. Yeah. But then, I mean, he, yeah, he's another uh, guy who's been on the been on the receiving end of all this SJW bullshit because he happened to like say the word retard and then ask someone if they were retarded and then the internet was set ablaze by that. Yes, uh, once again, it's an incredibly sorry state of affairs, and I do believe that the next one is uh, Alex Hall. Uh, yeah. yeah, he was, he was doing. He, he's the guy behind. Uh, ben is die. Yeah, Ben is kill. <laughs> R.I.P. Ben. <laughs> and he, he's been doing the Lord's work too. Uh, sort of talking down SJWs and and promoting uh, the fine young capitalists who uh, <laughs> were pretty much left destitute by Zoe Quinn. They they were behind a. Uh, a game jam promoting uh, female game designers. And I remember this. Yeah, Zoe Quinn basically turned her horde of angry young social justice warriors to the thing, oh yeah, it's misogynistic and oppressive to women and all this and that. And now they're left with pretty much nothing. And there's an, in I think it's an Indiegogo uh, trying to raise money in order to still do it, and I, I hope to God that they manage to make it, because, you know... Yeah, I'd recommend you guys check it out, I'm fairly certain there'll be a link in the description. Yeah, I saw I saw a couple of the games on the uh, on the Indiegogo, and uh, and they all looked really interesting. There was one that was like a, a two-player iPhone game, where you like put your iPhones together, and then it's sort of like a ice hockey, not ice hockey, uh, air hockey. Oh, dude, that's awesome! Yeah, I thought it was pretty rad. <laughs> that's awesome, yeah. I would play the shit out of that. Yeah, I mean, damn right, man. Everybody loves air hockey. Yeah, who doesn't like air hockey, really? Exactly. Oh, anyone who has to People that are too short to reach the uh, the paddles. <laughs> <laughs> and now they don't have to reach the paddles. Exactly. It's a Play perfect it on your deal face. for everyone. Um, yeah, personally, I know it's not written down, but I want to mention. Uh, Phil Fish and how he's been doing oh. this. The the man of the hour himself, oh. Mister. Just got to sort of wade right into the tornado, isn't he? Every... Yeah, I'm fairly certain he is the tornado so, and the person who wades into it. I have to I have to check. Is his Twitter still? Deleted? I don't think so. I, no, I, well, it's yeah, still I down. It's... I'm. Yep, it's internal server error on uh, trying to. I'm open I'm fairly account. certain the Phil Fish is. A supernatural being much akin to Freddy Krueger. We've <laughs> killed him after Fez. 
And now he's haunting our dreams. It's just like his ghost is haunting Twitter. <laughs> just... Sort of comes and goes as, on a whim. Ca- just kill him, project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Instead Instead of in people. the words of the, uh, the legendary uh, in, um, internet aristocrat, he's just a one-hit wonder who just... He can't make another game if he tried, and now he just doesn't want to be forgotten. He likes to feel yeah. like he's famous now. He got used to it, and now, we, now everyone realizes. Has anybody just a... seen that episode of Futurama where Bender has the massive statue built of him that says <laughs> "Remember me" and spits yeah. fire? <laughs> that's what Phil Fish wants. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, that's what he wants his Twitter to be. It seems like. <laughs> it, but but I think it's best if he leaves it deleted because if anybody sort of looks back on on his Twitter page, all they're going to see is Phil Fish making an absolute bell end of himself. He said, oh, yeah. and I quote, and then he deleted it moments after. I'm sure you guys, you guys uh, heard this. Oh, but he the tweeted, yes, you are all uh, basically rapists to all the people that criticise Zoe Quinn. And <laughs> even he had the good fucking sense to delete that comment immediately after, but the internet, the internet knows. The Apparently internet never he forgets. was lacking it completely to actually make it. According to him, he was uh, at a a wedding with Zoe Quinn a few months back. So who knows? Maybe they got a little freaky in the in the coat closet. You know. Actually, there was because uh, everyone, there knows, was... everyone knows you can be totally impartial when you're like, going to the same fucking wedding as people. You can't possibly. Well, uh, apparently be there was a guy, uh, a very reputable guy in the video games industry, who, who apparently was at that wedding, who claimed on uh, Twitter that he was sexually harassed by Zoe Quinn. And he said that he thought nothing about her at the time, but, you know, now it's kind of uh, caused a little bit of suspicion for him. And Phil Fish replied to him by calling him human slime, <laughs> by saying that nobody wanted him at the, ma- like, at the wedding anyway. So you can Which... basically translate it into, oh fuck, he's got a point, you keep your opinions to yourself, yeah, you misogynistic pig. I'm going to abuse much you until you pass down. Yeah. Sexual harassment for someone like Zoe Quinn is a matter of life and death. But when a gentleman is sexually harassed, pretty much the go-to thing for Phil Fish is that he wasn't supposed to be at the wedding and that he's human slime. Oh, no one wanted you there anyway. Therefore, you totally were allowed to be sexually harassed and no one came. Exactly. <laughs> that's, I how, mean, that's how it works, right? I mean, Absolutely. You know, how are you supposed to promote equality in that respect when... Every, every, equality. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I, I I think we're about, what, 56 uh, minutes in. There, there. Do you guys want to kind of conclude it? Would, would you want to conclude it, Tom? By any chance? Any final mm. thoughts? Um, Final thoughts. Everything is shit. We hate video yeah, games. Yeah, I'd say that. Video, I think it's video a good way to end it on. Shit. Yep. Video games are shit, yep. and we hate them and the entire yeah. industry. But it's still mm. what we're gonna work in. <laughs> I'm gonna go off this podcast, play some Tomodachi Life, and be really, really angry about it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna finish, and um, then I'm gonna finish, uh, and then I'm gonna go play a game, and I'm gonna be real pissed off about it as well. Yeah, <laughs> gotta be angry. I'm gonna play games, games, but I'm not gonna like it. <laughs> Remember, kiddies, if you're gonna play video games, then you've gotta play them angry because we're not allowed to like them because we're entitled. Yeah, yeah, we are cis white scum and also males, and therefore our opinion, our opinion is wrong by default. And if we like exactly. the game, it's wrong. Yeah. All of our hard earned money doesn't mean that we're allowed quality products anymore. No, because we're so entitled and. Yeah, we've got to be happy with half me. <laughs> Just remember, even though we're paying these guys to do a job, they get to say how good the job will be. Yep. Not us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yep, that's a good good ending point, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's just a good place to finish it. Everything's shit. We're white, cis, and, scum, uh, and proud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you want to have a uh, spirit animal, Callum, in which to sign off with? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make my, uh, my my spirit animal noise. Yeah, if you want to make the wall, the wombat noise, you're more than happy to. <laughs> what kind of noise does a wombat even make? <laughs> it sounded like the fucking ghost from Mario. <laughs> I can't even remember. Mine is an imperial shag, uh, Corant. <laughs> So I suspect it's it goes. Decided that it's the Imperial Shag, is it? Yeah, the Imperial Shag. So, 
Uh, it's good night from the Imperial Shag. Good night from the Wombat. <laughs> and good night from me. I'm human because it was my Google Drive account and therefore I have my name on it. <laughs> yeah, you're, I'm you're not just Carl. Me and Scotty are gonna go yiff in hell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have dreams of my fursona. <laughs> oh, oh. I could, uh, I could have lived the rest of my life being happy without that knowledge. <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, I am a cormorant, and that was my cormorant. <laughs> <laughs> Good night from me.